There are lots of global trends that are happening right now that are impact learning and development and the way people work and learn. One that's uh, surfaced in my mind in the research that I've been doing is the move to digital transformation. I feel like that's coming up with a few clients in a couple of different ways. And uh, it's certainly not new. Uh, it's been around this article by McKinsey identifies um, this transformation and the digital skill sets that people need. Uh, that reports from, from 2021. I would say that the pandemic and COVID has accelerated that, if anything. It certainly is still there, but I think it's even accelerated. And what does that mean for learning and development? So the faster move to digital transformation means that we've, we, we've moved online. Obviously, we've been learning and working virtually, and e-learning has, has become a bigger part of, of how we're learning. It also means that we need to future-proof our skills, and I see lots of webinar invitations and, and uh, groups and forums that talk about future-proofing your skills or the future of work or the future of learning, so certainly it's out there. And, uh, and there's four big skills that McKinsey identifies in this article, uh, cognitive, interpersonal, self-leadership, and digital. And if we think about the impact on learning and development with all of this is that we need to take a step back and look for what are those skill sets that we need to develop our employees? So how do we need to upskill them so that they're ready for this ongoing digital transformation? And, um, and also then how can we, by upskilling, how can we build that bench strength? So how can we make sure that we have that, that talent pool for, for employees that we need so that our organizations can grow and thrive? The McKinsey study identifies four skill categories. I touched on them briefly, but I think I, I want to show them a little bit more in depth here. So cognitive, uh, interpersonal, self-leadership, and digital. So within each of these boxes, there's lots of kind of subsets and, and actual skills. And you can see in the bottom right with the, the bright blue, uh, all those digital skills that are needed. So where does a learning strategy fit in? I find that there's, in this case, three, and there's lots of reasons to have a learning strategy, but I'm going to touch on three in this instance. So a learning strategy helps find pockets in the organization that are providing training and so that you can leverage that work across the organization. The client that I'm working with right now, the functional areas doing, um, doing training, the IT areas doing training, the innovation teams doing training, HR is doing training. So there's all these little pockets. And, um, and so what the learning strategy will do is help a identify them but also figure out how can you leverage the work that all those individual areas are doing and, and bring it together so that it's uh, that so that there's a standard experience from the employee's perspective so that you have economies of scale, you're not duplicating efforts, all those good things. The second thing learning strategy can do is obviously lay out a plan for how are we going to develop those core skills. So those some of those things that the McKinsey report identifies. So how can we have a plan for that while also being responsive to new things that emerge so that there's that tension there between those two? And overall, the third thing, I think a learning strategy really helps answer the question, how do we want learning and development to support our employees and the organization and figuring out what is that vision for the learning function? I'd love to have a chat if you're interested in talking about learning strategy, if there's anything you're wondering about from this video or just in general. Uh, it's a topic that's near and dear to me, so I'd happy, be happy to have a conversation.